Good evening. Welcome to the East Brandywine Township Board of Supervisors regular session for Thursday, August 16, 2018. Uh, just a reminder that a recording device will be used during this meeting, and we're going to start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, just uh, rules of conduct for the public meeting established by resolution 2001-08. Time allotted to each individual making a comment shall be three minutes unless otherwise set by the presiding officer. Additional public comment may be granted at the discretion of the presiding officer at the conclusion of the meeting. So we're going to go ahead and start out with public comment for non-agenda items. Seeing none, we're going to go ahead and move on to the previous mi uh, meeting minutes uh, for the August 2nd, 2018, Board of Supervisors. Motion may be approved as submitted. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Treasurer's report. Thank you. Bank account balances as of August 16th, 2018 are as follows. General fund checking, $2,375,949.94. General fund investment, $708,722.73. State fund, $556,310.73. Referendum open space, $2,388,338.42. Open space, $727,601.37. Traffic impact, $1,504,745.96. And there are a total of 134 invoices in need of approval for the general fund. And that would be in holding back checks number, check numbers 23860 and 23863 as requested. And we also have three checks in need of approval from the state fund and two checks in need of approval from the police capital reserve. And those are reflected in the reports before you this evening. Okay, thank you. Let's take a minute and go over the expenses. A motion that we approve the requested disperse. Oh, I have a question first, Mary. I see that uh, there are three checks voided on the that grouping for the prothonotary. That's yeah. That's those are the those are the three that. Um, no, um, okay. the, there were actually five checks voided uh, that were drawn in preparation for the prothonotary, and then the property owners paid their taxes, so they weren't needed. Okay. And then I'm holding back the two that you referenced. Okay. Very good. Um, I make a motion that we approve the disbursements as requested. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Okay, Township Manager's report. Scott. Thank you. Um, Bondsville Road between Horseshoe Pike and East Reesville Road will be closed from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. during the week for the installation of a water main extension by Aqua Pennsylvania. The um, Aqua has put up signs well in advance as required by PennDOT. Um, the reason for this main extension is to allow for better water flow for fire protection. It's actually going to connect a fire hydrant um, at the uh, firehouse, which is where the, the, uh, that main actually dead ends. 
and the fire hydrant at the uh, near the pump station on Bonsville Road. Projects expected to be completed, weather permitting, by February, I'm sorry, Friday, September the 7th. Uh, the County Department of Emergency Services is collecting information from municipalities about any damage from flooding that occurred on Monday, August 13th because of the heavy, down, uh, heavy rainfall and also the, uh, uh, the rain we've gotten over uh, the past three weeks that's basically saturated the ground. Uh, our immediate area did not seem to be impacted by significant damages. Uh, primarily we had uh, debris along the roadways and the streams. Uh, many areas, however, in southern and eastern portions of the county suffered significant flooding damage. Uh, there were several water rescues throughout the day uh, and they're still cleaning up from that. It's difficult for the township staff to know about hidden damage uh, to properties such as flooded basements, other damage that we may not be able to see um, since the flooding receded quickly in many locations in our area. Uh, residents and business owners who experience damage uh, to their properties are, are encouraged to contact the township office to report any damage. Uh, township and county staff will determine if there is sufficient damage to justify a disaster declaration by the president and seek federal disaster funds. Uh, information must be provided to the county by 4 o'clock on Tuesday, August 21st. I don't know how they expect us to do this, but it's that way with every snowstorm or flood. But that's the uh, usual short notice that's provided by PEMA and, and FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Um, there's currently a scam being circulated by a group called Volunteer Fire Alliance from Topeka, Kansas, uh, mimicking the fundraising mailers used by local fire companies uh, and includes using the fire company's logo and information. They've gotten very sophisticated with this. Uh, these mailers instruct the recipient to send their donations to Topeka rather than the local fire company. These scams have been found in the middle part of Pennsylvania, specifically East Stroudsburg Borough, as well as here in Chester County at the Union Fire Company of Oxford. Uh, similar scams have occurred by telephone over the years by firms claiming they are soliciting on behalf of the local fire company or uh, the local fraternal order of police. And I know I've received the uh, police requests in the past. Uh, please make sure that your donations go to the East Brandywine Fire Company at their mailing address of 2096 Bonneville Road and not to a firm indicating they represent the fire company. The Maple View Townhome Project located on the part of the Waters Farm on Horseshoe Pike is preparing to begin breaking ground on 154 unit townhouse community. Uh, Pre-construction me meeting is scheduled here on August 29th with uh, the developer, PennDOT, Conservation District, and of course uh, township representatives. Um, Land Development Services is the developer and they're proposing to develop the site in three phases starting from North Guthriesville Road and working toward uh, connecting the main spine road, Warren Lane, through the development with Horseshoe Pike at Bonsville, uh, I'm sorry, Bollinger Road. Uh, Land Development Services is currently coordinating with Pulte Homes on the intersection and traffic improvements at Bollinger Road and Horseshoe Pike, although I don't have any updates on a pre-construction meeting with PennDOT on that project, which I hoped would happen earlier this month. And the last item, um, I got a call from Mike Grime from Aqua PA. Uh, he wanted to notify, uh, he's been asked to contact all the municipalities in the area that Aqua will be submitting a rate increase to the PUC on Friday, August 17th for water and sewer rates all across their Pennsylvania divisions. Uh, the reason for the rate increase is funding system improvements. That was just the general information he could give me. Uh, their requested rate increase is 16.3%, uh, which uh, Aqua reported is their first rate increase since 2011 if the PUC grants the full rate increase, which is highly unlikely based on past history, this would translate into an increase of $9.22 uh, for the average residential homeowner that uses nine, I'm sorry, 4,000 gallons of water, 
They're also increasing, uh, proposing increasing fire hydrant rentals, approximately $3.86 to $25.54 per hydrant, and I believe that's also per month. Um, I've already notified one of our, uh, or I should say, one of our residents who has uh, been a PUC lobbyist uh, about this pending filing, and he's already gearing up to uh, represent the township and the community for um, this latest rate increase. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead on to the assistant township manager's report. Luke? That will be you. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm pleased to announce that the township has been awarded a Pico Green Region Grant to cover a portion of the costs associated with the community park to Ferndale Lane trail connection project as shown on our official map. Our application for funding was in the amount of $10,000. This project, which is spearheaded by the Trails Committee and in cooperation with the Open Space and Parks and Recreation Committees, aims to provide approximately 650 feet of a safe pedestrian uh, trail connection between phase two of the community park and the existing trail stub uh, located on the Ferndale Lane cul-de-sac. The township completed its acquisition of 0.66 acres required for this project earlier this year, and the trail committee is currently working with the township engineer on an RFP for the construction of the trail and related improvements. Um, <clears throat> it's been a busy summer so far, and, and there's uh, no exception uh, in my report for the next 30 days. I'd like to make a report on the events that will happen before the, the, the next regular session of the Board of Supervisors on September 20th. Uh, starting with the big one, um, on August 18th, we have three events. Uh, early in the morning is the Run for the Parks 5K. This is the fourth year for this event, and it is a fundraiser that benefits uh, East Brandywine Township Community Park. Uh, registration begins at 7.30 a.m., the Kids Run begins at 8.30 <coughs> a.m., and the main event begins at 9 a.m. A little later in the day, from 11 to 3, is uh, Community Day in the Park. Um, where there are a host of activities um, available. Um, it includes, uh, uh, for the second year, a kids' fun zone, which is a, a, a section of, um, uh, I won't say rides, but we'll say inflatable um, uh, bounce houses and, and other activities for kids. Um, that section of the event um, is, is ticketed. Um, tickets are $20 at the gate or $15 in advance here at the township building. And there are also a huge range of free activities at the event, uh, such as crafter and vendor booths, bingo, pony, and hay rides, an antique and classic car show, uh, music by Mike Doyle and friends, uh, carnival games, face painting, Shriner crowns, uh, Shiner clowns, um, <laughs> giant checkers, mini golf, and a fire company demonstration. Um, so uh, mark your calendar, come out, join your friends and neighbors uh, and township staff out at Community Day from 11 to 3. And then to uh, cap off an exciting evening, um, the East Brandywine Fire Company will be um, uh, hosting their annual fireworks celebration. Gates open at 7, and parking donations and sales at the event benefit the fire company. I expect there's a part of the report later. I won't go into any more detail than that. Um, on August 30, the Chester County Planning Commission's Town Tours and Village Walks will host its finale of the, the summer 2018 uh, season with a tour of the Bondsville Mill Park. Um, those who are interested in attending should come here to the township building at 5.30 p.m. and catch one of the shuttles that will be going back and forth, and you'll enjoy a guided tour of um, the um, Bondsville Mill, and the theme is the evolution of power supply and fabric production at the mill site. On September 7th, the last of three free movies in the park uh, will be Star Wars The Last Jedi. Uh, make plans to enjoy this event. Uh, bring uh, your lawn chairs and blankets and join us at dusk for an evening under the stars. Popcorn will be provided. On September 16th, the first of three fall speaker series hosted by the Historic Commission um, will feature uh, the story of Buffalo Bill. Uh, Buffalo Bill is a, a well-known character in the American West, 
um, but you may not know that he has uh, a unique connection to East Brandywine Township, and that is that uh, his livestock were wintered uh, here in the township at uh, the Trago Farm, which is now part of the Applecross development. Uh, on September 19th, uh, the township will be hosting a Red Cross blood drive from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. More information about any of these events can be found on our webpage at ebrandywine.org or on the Nextdoor or Facebook social media platforms maintained by the townships. My thanks as always to the uh, volunteers who have donated hundreds of man hours to make these events possible. The budget committee held its inaugural meeting on August 7th. At this meeting, the committee elected new leadership. Uh, the committee also planned all of their future meetings uh, reviewed a chart of township accounts and solicited budget requests from the various township committees and department heads. The committee next meets on September 25th to review all of these requests and begin working towards uh, recommending a balanced budget to you, the Board of Supervisors. A separate multi-municipal committee made up of representatives of West Brandywine, Upper Euclid, and East Brandywine townships is planning to meet on August 22nd to hear a presentation by the East Brandywine Fire Company. That is all I have for you this evening. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go moving on to the building inspector's report. <clears throat> Thank you. For the month of July, total of 31 building permits issued, 12 zoning permits issued, <clears throat> excuse me, 16 use and occupancy permits were issued, total of 180 inspections, seven failed inspections, total fees collected by the building department for the month, 43,893.50. That's respectfully submitted, Naran King, Building and Code Secretary. <clears throat> Thank you, Matt, Roadmaster's report. Thank you. On July 26, um, Ms. Beth Yor uh, of Cedarville Engineering and I met with the Hideaway Homeowners Association and their property manager uh, to discuss the pollutant reduction plan and the uh, Culbertson Run proposal. We are in the planning stage for stream bank restoration along the Culbertson Run within the development. Ms. Yor did a PowerPoint pre presentation demonstrating um, and explaining the PRP and how the township is responsible for rem removing sediment from two streams within the township. The proposed project would restore the stream to a more natural look rather than the channelization that is now occurring. One item that was mentioned is the Army Corps of Engineers has a conservation easement on the stream corridor. Ms. Yor is currently investigating whether the Army Corps would permit this project to move forward. Um, okay, Scott already mentioned the uh, Bondsville Road closure. So, <coughs> uh, PennDOT is requesting additional right of way for a culvert replacement on Creek Road just west of Down Forge Road. This acquisition is part of the Whitaker Park located on the north side of Creek Road. They made an offer of $500 for an approximate 12 by 25 portion of the park along Creek Road. And Scott is reaching out to Sheila, Fem Sheila Fleming of the Brandywine Conservancy and Jack Steffenrood of Natural Trust for information regarding the possible sale of the right of way and if it's permitted due, due to contributions from both those en entities. I, I have not heard back from either. I know I found out that Mr. Stafford is on vacation for two weeks, uh, and I left a message for one of his associates, and I'm kind of surprised that I haven't heard back from Sheila Fleming. Um, Kristen and I were talking before the meeting, and it, I doubt it's going to be an issue. There may be some money that the Natural Lands or Brandywine Conservancy requests from PennDOT for this because it was the subject of um, grant funding from both the county and DCNR. So um, as soon as I have an answer on that, I'll provide that to, uh, to Kristen and, and Matt and the board so we know how we can move forward. Do you want the board to take any action to authorize anyone to sign it, contingent upon that? <coughs> Agreeing to that? No, I don't. I don't yet? see any hurry on okay. PennDOT's part. So. The project's not supposed to happen until 2019. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to be this year. And just to make it clear, when I read the offer to purchase and summary of just compensation, 
what they're asking for is not actually a right of way, but it's a temporary construction easement, and that's all. I believe it's both. I believe it's mm -hmm. yeah. Here's the plan. Um, Their plans are really hard to, to read. Yeah. It says for five hundred dollars for the right of way required from your property for the transportation improvement, and for the effects on your remaining property, if any. Yeah, it's, but it's it's for a temporary easement. If you look down. Because mm -hmm. I was concerned that it was a rather minimal amount if it was a permanent easement, but it appears it's only a temporary easement for the construction. Yeah, it's all that's shown on here is there's so many things shown, but it does show. Temporary um, construction temporary easement. Temporary construction easement, but it does have, it does say here, required right away line, which looks like, if you look at this plan, J, it looks like it goes beyond. See this required right away line here? Yeah. I don't know if that's. Well, we have the contact number for Roger Joseph, so maybe Scott, if you want to just double check on that to make sure that it is a temporary, mm -hmm. and then if not, we'll discuss further compensation. Well, one of my concerns is that the, uh, in a heavy rainfall, there's quite a bit of water that comes down Creek Road and drains into that culvert and across the street into the Whitaker property. The, I'm sorry, the Whitaker Park property. And um, we've had washouts there before, uh, trees and mulch that were basically removed. So I'd like them to, as part of this, to consider doing something and as Kristen said earlier they're very difficult to work with but we'll see what we can get from them okay thank you mm -hmm. um, East Brand New England Police Department Chief the monthly report for July 2018 the department had 2307 recorded incidents we completed 216 investigations uh, officers had four criminal arrests, three summary arrests. We completed one juvenile petition. Eight accidents were investigated. We issued 134 traffic citations. 40 traffic warnings were issued. Officers conducted 114 vacation house checks. And they logged 8,286 miles of patrol. And you have, there was no training for the month. There was no correspondences received and you have copies of the uh, monthly investigations and the officer activity reports. Okay, thank you. Uh, we don't have any old business this evening, so we'll move on to new business. The Carlino East Branding Wine oh, Park Company. I'm sorry, I, you know what? <coughs> I didn't see, I didn't see uh, Joe here, so I apologize. <laughs> How can you miss all this? That's right, thank you. Uh, uh, good evening, thank you. For the month of July, 2018, the East Branding Wine Fire Company responded to 80 calls for help. 31 of those incidents were fire related, 49 were medically uh, oriented. Uh, within our townships, we responded to, responded to 72 of the emergencies in our primary run district, and we were called for help eight times from outside uh, cities and townships. Uh, per incident, we averaged around 10 firefighters per incident. Uh, this month, or sorry, in the month of July, there were $13,000 of estimated fire damage from a vehicle fire on Creek Road. Uh, we had three training periods as well as 21 individuals on average showing up for those events. Uh, to mirror the assistant township manager's uh, statements earlier, to confirm, yes, we are having a fire, fireworks celebration this Saturday evening. Uh, the gates will open at 7 p.m. Uh, it is funded by donations and uh, support from uh, area businesses as well as uh, individuals. Uh, so the request is, although it is sponsored, a recommended $5 parking donation is requested. So we hope to see everyone there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, no old business, so we'll move on to new business. Uh, Carlino East Brandywine LP MTF grant application support letter request. Nice to see everybody. Only one lawyer in the house, too. Oh. <laughs> um, this is pretty simple. Uh, we have applied for a multimodal transportation grant from the state of Pennsylvania to build the connector road. Um, these are common in the development community. And part of the application, I brought the application. 
presentation we've heard from Scott uh, is a letter that the Commonwealth Financing Agency, which is a body from the state that underwrites these, needs a letter from the township saying the roadway is part of the planning of the, you know, roadway plans for the township. It's consistent with your comprehensive plan, your 209 plan, land development plans, what have you. So um, we sent this to Scott, I don't know, a month or so ago. We said, you guys wanted to have questions answered, so yeah, here I am. I think the one question that I had, and, and again, uh, it, it's more ignorance on my part from not being here from day one with you guys, but there was a grant that came in for, for the building of the roads, and um, uh, I guess my question was, there was also in a, a fee in lieu of for open space. How do how do we do for for the for the uh, well? There's a few not for the open space for building of the roads. I'm sorry, and I think I had asked you, Scott, this question. I don't know if we ever touched back on it or not. No, we did. There was an offset for um, the the nor the normally uh, accessible fee for the uh, open, not, 209. I know. Yeah, 209. Traffic impact. Impact. Got right. Traffic impact. Traffic impact. Right. Traffic impact fee. Uh, and that was discussed with the previous board. Um, uh, Carlino's engineer, Shirag Thakar, provided uh, information, as I recall, um, for verifying the cost of the, the, the road from Route 322 to North Cottrezville Road, the change of the traffic signal, etc. And that um, some figure in between those were was the offset for the traffic impact fee. I know that I have somewhere uh, in the file a um, I think it's a spreadsheet that that verifies where the number came from. Okay, so, so the township charges the 209 fee, your right. capital improvement program, and for each trip generated, you charge a fee. I forget what it is. Like Thirty-five. High, but Thirty-five zero eight thirty-four. So we're off. Instead of paying you the fee, we're offsetting that fee to the extent the road uh, fulfills that obligation. Quite frankly, I think it's something like sixty or seventy thousand dollars. I don't have it with me right now. That we owe the township in addition nine. to construct something like nine. that. Ninety. Or 90. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our trips are going to go down a little bit because if we're taking the bank pad off with our plan, so it's a modest decrease in trips, but. So that, so the calculation with the new plan, yes. that's what's going to start over. I mean, there's going to be a discussion about what the traffic impact fee would be, what you're constructing, yes. assuming your project is approved, what the cost of that is, because it, I mean, it may be, you may have to update the, those numbers. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. yeah. Pannoni will have up. to look at that and make sure that's consistent. Yep. And then this board will decide if that's how they want to handle the payment of that fee. So, but, so if, and then you'll, if, if you continue to take on and this board accept, accepts that, the construction of that road, this grant is helping you pay for a por for your portions of the construction of the correct. road. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So. And the township, one thing I want to be clear on, because when I read it the first time, the, the grant application requirements, there's absolutely no match being requested of this township. Correct. There's nothing the township is paying for. This is purely a developer is entitled to go out and seek this grant from the Commonwealth. And if you get it, you get it. Yeah. But one, the only thing you need the township to do is write a letter that says that constructing this road is consistent with your comprehensive plan, your development plan, et cetera. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I understand all that. My my concern was more is the taxpayer double getting double dipped on. You know what I mean? In other words, are they giving a tax uh, decrease to you, and then you get a grant, and then you make the money off the yep. grant and then what the taxpayers so do. So the t East Brandywine Township is neutral in this. You're going to get a road and some 209 fee. We're going to we're going to fund that construction. Hopefully we'll get some of this grant. This is pretty common in the development community, the state, PennDOT and you know really various entities whether it's brownfields through job creation or really infrastructure creation and that's what this is about. There's money available. I'm not sure we'll even get it. But yeah. No, no. And like I said, that was my, you know, that was my question anyway. Yeah. Only because I, I haven't been here from 10, yeah. 9, 
nine, ten years ago. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't 100% certain what, and you know, again, this is this was my question. So this, th look, the irony of this is this has taken so long, the costs have gone up so much, it's given us time to go pursue these kinds of things. So, uh, but East Brainy Line, to be clear, there's no uh, match, there's really no underwriting, no anything. It's got to say this is for a road that is part of our plans. Um, these are very common arrangements in really mid to larger size projects. And um, from a tax standpoint, you know, as soon as we get this built, we can start collecting property taxes. It'll help East Brandy Wine and the school district and the county. Do you guys have any questions? I don't have any questions. I do. Um, is this the MTF, the July 31st application, is that the cost for the road? itself from North Guthersville all the way to 322? Correct. Because um, I just don't understand, you know, I, the way that I look at it is the grant that you received, the first one that Kyle was talking about, expires February 20th, 2020 uh, is the deadline for you to be able to collect and you had mentioned that on this application that you're going to be done September uh, 2020. So if you're going to receive a million dollars from the first grant, and then you have, you're asking for 1.1 million for this grant, you're already over your construction costs. And well, so, so a couple things. So the first grant is a RACB grant, Regional Capital Assistance Program. It's another program. It's not related to the road. It's related to general economic development. But it's so for the road. The road and other site work construction, you can use that, those proceeds for buying land. You can is that what that's being used for? You, it's quite honestly, Jason, I forget what is in the application for that. It's been like five years since we you know, applied and were awarded that. Um, but so you can layer in these grants, number one. And number two, our costs, you know, just defending the township's desire for this road have been significant. I think you probably know that. Um, as far as, is it your opinion at the MOU that the, the previously agreed traffic impact fee is still going to be waived? Uh, it's my understanding that we should get a credit for the cost of the road against the 209 fee. So is that but yes? Th yeah. Okay. I, I, I understand your question. So you want $3.75 million of tax money to build a million dollar road? No. So the road is about a million five. So I have, it's in the application. So the, the, the road itself and related improvements are about a million five. This new grant, if we get it, which, you know, quite honestly, I doubt we're going to, you know, you ask for what you can get for it. It's been pretty good so far. <laughs> well, so, and so, but just to be clear, yes, we're trying to layer, just so there's no misunderstanding, we are trying to layer two grants together. And so get a, a $1.7 million traffic impact fee reduction. That's, well, because we're, cause we're, you know, constructing a road, so it's not... But that's what the grants were. The road, you have a uh, July 30th, 2018 estimate from Alan Myers for 1.1 million, another 400,000 soft costs. So you say 1.5 million, and that was uh, right now, but four years ago, the construction costs were more for the road than it is now. That's what my concern is, and it has been. I've been vocal about this. I think that for a road that wasn't on the transportation capital improvement plan, you know, you already had to, regardless if the road was there or not, you would still have to construct your access to 322. You would still have to, if you wanted to move the road over, relocate the underground detention basin. All the improvements on your own property that you purchased as equitable owner, you'd have to do anyway. So, so, so here, if, if I understand, I'm not exactly sure where you're going, but so this, 
state of Pennsylvania, not East Brandywine Township, not the county, furnishes developers pockets of money if they qualify for all sorts of things. Infrastructure improvements, which could be roads, it could be parks. It could be brownfield redevelopment. It could be from job creation. So yes, we've, we're trying to layer in a couple of these grants because they're available, okay? So I'm not sure which taxpayer you're referring to. Well, but Pennsylvania taxpayers as a whole, I guess. But he, so I'm not sure if we're gonna get this money or not, but it's... it's but you already have money though for it. I mean, you, you have a grant that's gonna cover the cost of your road already. You, you've been awarded that. Yeah, and we're looking for an, I just told you twice, we're trying to layer in a couple of these grants. What would you? Well, can, can I, let me finish. Yeah, that's fine, sure, sorry. So this, this multimodal transportation fund grant is gonna be just for the road. The RACB grant, the Regional Assistance Capital Program, we can use for other things. And I think you're well aware this has been a, what, we've been here, I guess it's seven years probably, you know, round numbers tonight. Eight. Eight years tonight. Well, no, it's eight and a half. Yeah, so um, because of the opposition to the road that we've fought long and hard in all kinds of courts, relying on, you know, Chief of Police's recommendation, PennDOT's recommendation, boards, multiple boards before going back to 2009 or eight wanted this road, okay? This road precedes us, and I think you're well aware of all the history, recent history of the road. So. Well, the road wasn't on the, the road wasn't that important because I didn't think about it at that time for, I think 2006 is when they really started thinking about it, yeah. if I remember. So, at any rate, it, we've applied to a state of Penn, two Pennsylvania programs, it's common, and yeah. East Brandywine is indifferent, it is okay? It doesn't affect East Brandywine. You're gonna have the road and you're gonna have your- Well, we have to sign a letter of support for you, and to me, I think that's, you know, that's it's not only my responsibility, for the residents of East Brandywine, but also as a, as a as an, as a taxpayer of Pennsylvania, I'd be kind of upset if you layered in, you get you know pretty much all of your site work paid for by taxpayers. That's what I'm, my concern is, and I think uh, you know for eight years of litigation you know, with opposition, the state overturned it. Not the opposition, yeah, and that's what I was kind of. So I don't know how one could blame BBA or LNR or anyone for this taking so long because you know we, no one you know knows what the outcome is going to be, and the state overturned it. So I think that. Well, that's really not true either, but it's okay. It's well, I'm sorry. we're not true about it. Chester County Court of Common Pleas. The, the Appellate Court. The Commonwealth Court. Commonwealth, yes. Overturned Common Pleas. Okay. Um, so, look, you, you can represent the state of Pennsylvania. We, we were asking for the letter to be signed, okay? I understand so I, that, but... We're asking the, what we're asking is for the board to vote on and either support it or, or don't support it. We obviously think it should be supported, but, you know, that's up to you. It wasn't it already the deadline already July thirty first? Uh, no, we can get this in you know probably by the end of the month. So the awards are made or announced in November. So, as far as um, my other concern is on the grant application itself, it, it almost as, as appears to me that it insinuates that most of your permitting has been approved. Um, you know, your hop permit, uh, your DP, um, everything. And in my opinion, and you, I think that's not it, right? Am I yeah, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't believe that's what it says, but so it says we have pending land development applications, which we do. We have a NIPTES permit approval. We have a conservation district approval, and we have a uh, sewer module approval from DP and East Brandywine Municipal Authority. I don't think it says we have an HOP approval. We don't. That's what it says in 2012 on the application. Um, as far as the matched funds, that's nothing to do with the township? That's, no, that's Carlino money. 
my other concern is you have attached the latest development drawings that you submitted on July 3rd and in that it states the MOU uh, as a special note and um, in my opinion I didn't think the MOU was still valid because it's a previous board it's a proprietary agreement uh, the township wasn't mandated to build a road and we can't mandate you to build a road and if we approve this grant then th that means that we're accepting the MOU and that plan and then almost puts us in a situation that you know you're guaranteed approval without even looking at the plan before the planning commission that's not accurate. Yeah, I mean I would refer to your no, that's not accurate. it's not an accurate statement yeah. the board has to approve the plan still it's but if it's already no on. implicit approval by writing a letter <coughs> of consistency for a grant on a land development plan and we've had a conversation about whether I think the memorandum of understanding is a valid legal binding contract, and I think it is. So you do, but, but I do. And I so told you that. It, you, we, Kyle, and myself have not been on the board back in 2011. So it doesn't we're, matter. But there's, we're mandated. There's, there's contracts that have been entered prior to. I mean, other boards have entered contracts that the township can be remain for liable for. For what? For I don't know them off the top of my head. The, the township enters contracts all the time. I understand that, but what I'm saying is. It's saying that we have to approve a plan that was over. It doesn't by say the state. you have to approve a plan. It does it not does. say that what in this say? agreement. Which one have you looked at? I've looked at it. It says First that they thing. will submit a plan. And it, and the next line on it's number eight. So maybe you weren't given the correct MOU. Number eight says uh, uh, as long as it's the a plan After similar. After the township files a necessary declaration of taking to condemn the condemned property, developers shall submit to the township an application for preliminary slash final land development approval. The preliminary final plan shall be in substantial conformity with the final plans approved by the board on August 7th, with the exception of modifications necessary to bring the project into compliance with Section 350, 34E of the SADO. It doesn't say the township has shall to shall approve a plan that's that was approved on August 7th. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say anything about the township approving. It says the plan the shall be in substantial. Where does it say that? Then you then they then you're not you don't have the right one. Then I'm reading one dated August 20th, 2014. Then Is that the one you're reading? I'll show you the. I think that's maybe, Lou, can you go print one real quick? I have reviewed this because of your concern, Jason. I don't see anywhere in this where it says the board shall and must approve a plan. That would be illegal. I know, and that's what it says. Okay, I, Luke, then you show me that contract because I don't see that. Luke, can you do me a favor? Can you go print that really quick? Go ahead, go and print, please. Uh, uh, I, yes. Print, what, what, what are you asking to be printed? I'm just a copy it of was 2011, 2014. wouldn't the 2014? It's 2014. Yeah, this is a 2014, 2014 document. 2014 would be the That's what was attached. updated one anyway, so I don't see why the 2011. No, I'm not talking about the 2011. The 2014 says that That's we, the board shall approve a plan similar to a plan that was approved on August 7, 2011. I don't see that. No, I've never seen that. Uh, I, I'm going to suggest that now is neither the time or the place to, to debate the legal uh, Validity of the MOU. I don't I'm think not, that I'm not debating that. I'm so just saying about this grant. And I think that um, so the, you're you're trying to bring up a point about the MOU. The well grant says it, it's attached to the grant. <laughs> they attach the MOU to the grant. Specifically says in paragraph two, in the event the project receives final land development approval, there's absolutely nothing in this MOU that obligates this board to approve that plan. Uh, nothing. I, I think I read it differently. Uh, maybe when oh. Luke gets it. We'll I mean, I'm trying to give you assurance, and I have said this to the board. I've said this to everybody. This new new plan is being reviewed like nothing ever has happened. This is a new plan, right? It's attached with all the old review and approvals. That's that's not true. You're starting. They're starting over. They had they, the, the Commonwealth Court said the plan is had to be reversed. I understand that. They had to that. resubmit a new preliminary plan. I understand that, but what I'm, but in the application, the attachments that came with it. It already stated all the approvals that were 2012 conditional hop permit um, years and years ago. Was he, as Mr. Miller indicated, some of the outside agency permits, not the HOP, but some of the other permits, the NPDS permit, they, they continue to, they're independent of your approvals. No, I agree, like the DEP, I, I understand. So, but the, the board, look, the jury's out on that new plan. You haven't reviewed it yet. Your planning commission will review it at their next meeting, and then it'll ultimately come to you. But as far as this memorandum of understanding, 
I know Jay says this isn't the proper time, but I, I have given you the advice that I think that that is a valid contract. I think most of the terms of it have already been met, quite honestly, and I think it's beneficial to the township to continue to believe that it's a valid contract. But it says that we have to approve. It, it doesn't say that, Jason. I'm the, happy to. And again, I don't understand what that finish, issue has to do with, the traffic, the traffic with impact fees. Mr. Miller's request. All right, so let's do this. Let's go back to the original request. We'll, we'll, um, I, I think at this point, that is the last um, agenda item here. Uh, we'll can talk. I, can I give you two things? Yeah. Just a, a, a sample letter. I'm assuming this is for one of, for all the supervisors. Yeah. And Peter, that's the letter that yeah. you sent to me, which the supervisors have previously received. Oh yeah. Yep. Same letter. Um, all right. So I think uh, for for your initial question, we'll. You know, again, my my biggest concern was the was the issue with the uh, the double dipping. I wanted to make sure that we were, uh, you know, and you answered that as did Kristen. So I'm good with that. And I also uh, had a chance to talk to her about some other things while you guys were discussing things. So I'm okay with with the uh, supporting the letter request. I'll make a motion that the board authorize the submission of a letter to um, the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development indicating that the uh, East Brandywine Center Connector Road project is consistent with the township's comprehensive land use and transportation plans. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and then if you're welcome, we'll, we'll still discuss his, his issue. I just didn't want to hold up a meeting over that one issue. Yeah, let's discuss it before you approve it, though. I already got all the answers I needed from our solicitor, so I'm, I'm good. Um, okay, so subdivision and, and zoning applications, we don't have any this evening. Uh, we'll move on to public comment on agenda items. Section 13425 Creek Road. Uh, how did you guys, you guys just said you're starting over brand new with this project. How are you writing a support letter when the planning commission hasn't even reviewed the plan? It's, it's a How are you going off a 2014 letter, so coming up on five years old? If it's a new plan, don't you need to redo all that? It wasn't a support letter for the plan. It was a support letter for a grant for a road that ultimately may be built if the plan is approved. So well, if one of the continue. supervisors just requested like the actual literature of this and, and the, the assistant township managers getting it, Shouldn't we still be on that agenda item to no, we figure shouldn't. out where $2 you, million you dollars is? Should, because we have a board of three up here, and if two people feel strongly on a, a, a topic, they can vote on it, first of all. Second of all, I talked to the solicitor while, while Mr. Winters was talking. I did this talk to her. This is spoliation excuse, excuse of me. evidence, I, I asked and it's illegal. I asked the solicitor a question, and she answered my question, <clears> which was very important for my decision to be made tonight. And it was Isn't this township under litigation with this developer for unjustly commandeering somebody's property? Again, and now there's a $2 million question. One of the supervisors asked to get the material. He reluctantly said, okay, after the solicitor argued with her boss, and you're still not going to figure out where $2 million is. That's not, that's not, no, that's no. not a good topic. Is there topic. anything else for non-agenda non items you'd like to talk about? It's an agenda item. Oh, I'm sorry. Would, anything else of agenda items you'd like to talk about? Are you going to answer anything? I'm not going to answer that question right now. It's already been answered. Okay. Anybody else for agenda items? Make a motion we adjourn. Hold on. I want to actually um, bring a couple of things up, if, if you don't mind. Go ahead. <clears throat> I have um, been having some difficulty over the last few months um, performing my job as elected official if I don't have the correct information. And I've brought it to the attention before to the chairman, to the board, and to our manager. As elected official, it's, it is absolutely critical to be provided with the correct 
paperwork, the correct documents in order to make the best decision for the taxpayers and residents that have given you their trust to you know, be elected official in the first place for this position. And a few of my concerns have been, um, you know, just a couple of them and, and I'll get your guys' opinion. But as far as, I mean, would you agree with me that uh, that's, we should be getting the, the exact paperwork that, and not anything different? You know, do, if, you, if you are requesting a hop permit, do you expect to get a hop permit that contains the same documentation that was actually submitted to the state? In your opinion, I, I don't know where you're going with this. I'm just saying, in general, you know, what did you expect to get what was submitted to the state? Right, so, what's the top? What, what are you? Just what anything, you, anything at all. Well, I need to know exactly what. What are well, you referring to? If I, so, there was a hop permit submitted back in March, and our township was a co-applicant, and I requested a copy to our manager, and he. I'd, I'd asked why he co-signed on behalf of the township knowing that there's a 2011 developers agreement that was included in that application that was you know voided you know seven years ago and he responded that he uh, did not know what I was talking about if I recall and I said well can I have a copy of it in which he did and the cover letter was missing, as well as pages two to six, two to six for six pages total, which was the 2011 developers agreement. And then I had emailed our township solicitor, voicing my concern that we're not being, I'm not being provided the correct information. So she reached out to Carlino's attorney, Mark Kaplan, to ask for the file to be sent to her, which then she forwarded to me, and, and indeed it had a cover letter and a 2011 developer's agreement. And my question is, how can I as elected official make a, a proper decision if I don't have all the, the pertinent information that's included in something? I mean, wouldn't you agree? I, I would say I'm a facts guy, same as I told you before. I would, I mean, if you, if you, um, Give me the, the, the uh, information you requested and the information you received. I would gladly look through it. I um, have it right here. Well, so. I, I would gladly look through it tonight, tomorrow night. I'm not going to do it in front of a public meeting right this second because I want time to go through it all. But, um, yeah, that's, that's my answer to that. And then another concern is, you know, the July 19th meeting, I was on vacation, and I watched the video. And for me, watching the video, it was concerning when our planning commission chairman stood up to ask if this plan was going to be reviewed at the August 1st planning commission and, and you had said no it's not we're still and Jay was you could hear Jay whispering you know waiting for escrow and you said paperwork and then our township manager looked over and said no no it's it's good it's it's up to date we we received it and that was a Thursday night on July 19th the next morning, Friday, I had emailed Naran, who's in charge of the permitting, and asked her to forward me the current escrow sheet. And in fact, there was a negative balance of over $10,000. So our township manager lied in, on, in a public meeting to the board to the, and the chairman. He and did not lie. I was under the impression that Mr. Miller had Trip McCullough send the checks in. It was but, my understanding it was paid. But you said it's good. And then you took until the next, the 25th, I brought it up again because I was adamant saying that this should not be on the August 1st. Let's just file an ordinance. It needs to be collected 15 days in advance, fees and everything. And I didn't get a response until the 20, till a day before when, or you, you had said, Kristen reached out, our solicitor, and you had said that, uh, well, when Naran contacted me late yesterday and said that she did receive them and they cleared. So in my mind, again, how can you make a, a decision 
if you don't have the right information. And likewise for Jay, and likewise for me. <coughs> I don't think that's, um, you know, I don't think that's appropriate. I don't think it's professional, and I don't think that it makes our township look that great. And it's something that has happened to me since day one. And I have voiced my concern. And uh, the latest thing, well, I'll do another one other one, is, is, just, is just the donation to handicrafters after the, that was uh, performed by the township manager on his own accord after the chairman advised him to send flowers and for the township. I mean, I'm not, it's not a big deal, but that is another reason and it's concerning. And the latest is brought to my attention that back several weeks ago when this land development plan was first submitted on July 3rd, July 8th, Kirsten had advised the board that we need to make a decision on who we want to review this for, on behalf of the township. And I had recommended Gilmore Associates because they're not really local and to get a separate, separate, a second set of eyes on there. Jay had said, this is July 9th, Jay had said about 8.35 a.m. that you know, if we weren't gonna go with Inland, then he suggested we go with Pannoni. And then Kyle, you chimed in at 11.07 a.m. And you said, I'm, I'm okay with Pannoni. So then Pannoni it is. But then at 4.30 p.m., at 4.15, Nate Klein had emailed our manager and had said that, you know, is there any assistance that he can provide with this? Just let him know. And our township manager at 4.35 responded. Nate, Chuck Dobson will continue with the giant East Bramwine Center project rather than change to Pannoni. And this is five hours after the board had concluded that Pannoni was gonna be the engineer. And that's not right. That's insubordination. I don't know what else it is. And it's it, not it insubordination. I was not informed of that until later. You were CC'd on the emails. How did you not? I didn't see the email. You okay. think I see and every email? I'm not, and, I got and, and, and plus and emails I'm gonna, every I'll, day. All right, let me finish then. So. Well, and let me just say to that, that as soon, I mean, I, I did know what the board's decision was. And so when I knew that he was, that the plans had been brought to Inland, I specifically called Scott and said, the board wants Pannoni and doesn't want Inland to review them at all. And Nate went and picked the plans up and Inland has not done a review of these plans, Pannoni has. So. And then has done a review. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. They have not done a review of these plans. Well, if they have, it's not something that's going to get to the board. I mean, they're not, your letter, when you ultimately get a review letter, when the township gets a review letter, it's from Pannoni. And I've had three conversations with Nate about it. Nate is looking at it alone. This is Pannoni's review. He's not looking at anything the court's done. He's not looking at what Chuck Dobson might have done. I understand He's looking that. at it on his own merits. I understand that, but what I'm, but I'm just going to be, it's, I don't have maybe another minute and then I'll be done. But Carlina reimbursed Inland for $875 for the review of his new plan. And I had, the reason I know that is because I had asked our township manager, why would that be applied to that escrow if he's reviewing a new plan? So that should go on to keep things separate. And, <clears throat> and in fact, Scott had emailed that to Nate, I'm sorry, to Chuck Dobson and Nate and Matt Pujol, just to say FYI. And um, you know, I, I just don't think that's appropriate. And, and then to make it worse, you know, after he was he after he acknowledged that we were going to go Pannoni from Kristen, our solicitor advised him that that's what the board chose. He emailed Nate. On July 12th, only Nate Klein, no, no, not the board, not our solicitor. Nate, I hope these are helpful. And it was a drop box for every review letter that Inland has done on this, on this new plan. And 
the whole reason that we, I'm assuming, uh, I know for myself, did not want Inland to do the review is to get with the litigation and with my meetings with him for eight, nine hours, he, they couldn't answer all the questions. And not to mention he was an expert witness. So to get a second set of eyes on it, you know, an engineer should know you need the set of plans and your ordinances. That's all. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter how you, you know, which way you drive to exit here as long as you get there. Um, and to see our township manager go on, on his own and submit this to the company that we chose, it's not, it's not right. It's not, um, it's not ethical. It doesn't look good. And I, I want to see what your guys' thoughts are. And I'm going to respectfully request that the board has an executive session to discuss this further. But the township, the direction that we're going, we have a lot of growth in the last several years, and we're, and we're continuing growth with, with the current land development plans. And we need everyone on the same page to make the best decisions and what's best for the township. And if, if, if you can't trust the person that we appoint or hire to represent the best interest of the township for us, the three board members, as elected positions, how can we trust that we're doing the best thing for our residents? And I just, I just wanted to voice that, and I, um, <clears throat> that's all. Okay, so we have a lot to discuss. Um, okay, uh, I think you had a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.